In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the reliability of measurements, specifically about significant figures. Whenever we take a measurement, there are numbers that are known and there are numbers that are estimated. They are always required so that every digit is certain except for the very last one. In every measurement there will always be error. Some of it can be determinant error, which is consistent such as those with calibration, so you're always off by about five milliliters or something along those lines. Or indeterminate error, which is more of a human error issue, which causes fluctuation around the true value or factors beyond your control like air currents or static that cannot completely be eliminated. But let's talk about the issues with measurement with our instrument itself. Look at these two rulers. The one on the bottom has gradients, the one on the top does not. While the one on the bottom, because of the gradients, make it so it's more exact when we're trying to estimate. For instance, here we have no idea what the exact number would be or how precise it could possibly be, how accurate it could possibly be. We have to guess, we have to estimate, so maybe 6.8 or something along those lines. Whereas the one on the bottom, we see that there's gradients, so we can count the gradients. It's going from 60 to 70 and there are 10 gradients, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, so it's at least sixty-seven point something. That means I have to estimate that last one, so maybe sixty-seven point five. I'm giving these two examples specifically because with graduated cylinders, a lot of times you have there are different gradients between the numbers. What you need to do is figure out what the numbers count by first. So it goes from thirty-five to forty. It's a difference of five. There are five gradients in between these, so that means each gradient is equal to one. So that means 35, 36, 37. I'm going to say 36.5 because it's halfway to the 37 mark. In this situation, it goes from six to seven, so it's a difference of one, and there's ten gradients in the middle. So that means each gradient is equal to point one, to one-tenth. So 6.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6.6, .6, I'm going to guess the last one of 0. Notice in each situation I was able to tell you exact for the first couple and then guess the last one. You always have one number past the gradient, so that way that's the estimate. Oftentimes, when we're doing the doing math and doing calculations in science, the numbers are given to us, we're not reading the numbers themselves. So how do we know of those numbers which ones are significant and which ones were measured and which ones were estimated? There's a list of rules and if you notice here, it's primarily a result of the zeros. The zeros between digits are always important. It's the ones that are in front of and the ones that are at the back that are confusing. I call the ones in front leading zeros. And they are never significant. And the one in the back trailing zeros. And those are actually all dependent on whether or not you see a decimal. If there is a decimal in the back, and the zeros are in the back, they are significant. If there are, there's no decimal and the zeros are in back, they're not significant. We're going to do some practice with these. For instance, the zeros are in the back, yet I see a decimal here, so that means those are significant. So there's actually six significant figures here. 
there's zeros in the back, but uh, there is no decimal. So those aren't significant. There's only two significant figures here. That means the one is known and that two is estimated. When it comes to scientific notation, because there's always a decimal in scientific notation, all those numbers count. So there's five of them. Same with this one. There's four here. If by chance you are counting, if it's counting, or if it's a definition, then it's actually infinite significant figures. So because there's 25 students here, we counted 25. We can't have 25.2 students. It's an exact number. It's infinite. This next number, there's zeros in front, and the zeros in front never count. But there's also a zero in the back. Because of that decimal, that counts. So there's two. There's no zeros here, so both of those count. There's three numbers here. The zero's in the middle, so it counts, plus the scientific notation, so that automatically makes it. 13 eggs, that's a counting thing. That's the significant figures. So that means that's infinite. Scientific notation. Now this next one, they're all trailing zeros and there is no decimal. That means there's only one number here. It is a complete estimate. And then here, this is actually a definition. Any kind of conversion factor is automatically a definition and it's infinite. Now that we got the number of significant figures right and being able to identify them, let's start discussing how to use them in calculations. There's two sets of rules. There's adding, subtracting, and there's multiplying and dividing. With adding and subtracting, we depended on the significant figures, on the place value of the significant figures. With multiplying and dividing, we're looking at the quantity of significant figures. I'll explain further. Addition and subtraction rules. We're looking at the place value. So here it goes out to the 5, goes out to the 2, goes out to the 8. The 2 is the first place value to stop. So that's where we're going to stop the number. <coughs> what you're going to want to do is line up the number just like you did back in elementary school. You're going to add it all up. This number ends here. This number ends at the zero, and this number ends at the five. The very first one to end is that top number, so that's where we're going to cut the number off. Because these numbers are after the decimal, they just go away. Let's try another one. Line up the decimal, even though it's invisible here. And that comes out to be 206. Look at the place values. The 6 is the last place value here. The 1 is the last place value here. You're going to stop it where that last one is, so this is right here. This 6 rounds the 0 up. Now look here. Because there's a big difference between 206 and 21, that's not exactly a rounding off. It's in, if it's in front of the decimal, that becomes a zero, so 210 it rounds off to. Let's try that again. 88.50, line up the decimal. We're going to add it this time. It comes out to be 248.5. This six is the last place value on the top one. The zero is the last place value on the bottom one. We're going to round it off to that four. The eight, because it's greater than five, rounds that up to 25 because that 8 is in front of the decimal place becomes a 0. After the decimal place, it goes away. Alright, it feels like we have a pretty good handle on adding and subtracting. Let's look at multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing has to do with the fewest significant figures, so we're counting the significant figures in each of the numbers. So for instance here, 
we have three significant figures. Here we have three. Here we only have two. That means we're going to take the first two, because that's the smaller, and round it off. They put this in scientific notation. Notice that. The reason for that is if they just rounded it off and turned that to a zero, the only significant number here is the five. But we want that zero to count. So therefore, they put it in scientific notation to represent that. So let's try that again. Put in the calculator or multiply it out just like you ordinarily would. That answer actually comes out to be 11.1 centimeters cubed. Now go back and count your significant figures. We have two in the first number, only one in the first and second number, and three in the third. So one is the smallest number, so we only want one in our answer. That means our answer is going to become 10 centimeter cubed. You have the one and then that number in front of the decimal turns into a zero. The next one, if we multiply it, divide it out actually, 5.2475 grams per milliliter. There's three significant figures in the first number and four in the second. That zero counts because of the decimal, but that zero does not because it's in front. So that means we want three in our answer because it's fewer. Those are our three numbers we want. 5.2, because of the seven, the four rounds up because it's greater than five. And then these numbers, if it's behind the decimal, just goes away to be 5.25 5 grams per milliliter. The next one, we have 3.465 centimeters squared. We have three, then we have two. That means our final answer is going to have two, 3.5 centimeters squared. And one last one, just to make sure we know what we're talking about. 7797.4 would be the answer once you put it into the calculator. Two significant figures here, five here, because that zero counts because you see a decimal. That means we're going to have two in the final answer. So these are the two numbers we want. That nine rounds that seven up to an eight. Because it's before the decimal, they become zeros. So it becomes 7,800. Now let's talk about how accurate these numbers are. There is actually a difference between accuracy and precision. A lot of people use these words interchangeably, but in the scientific world, they're not the same thing. Accuracy is how close you are to the measured how close the measured value is to the actual value, or how exact the number is. Whereas precision is how close the results are to one another. For instance, this one has really good accuracy because they're all fairly close to the bullseye, but they're fairly spread apart around the bullseye, so therefore it's pretty bad precision. This one, all the results are close together, so it has good precision, but it's fairly inaccurate because it's away from the bullseye. And finally, this one is both accurate and precise because of the fact that they are bunched together and on top of the bullseye. So precision is how close they are to one another. Accuracy is how close they are to what you were aiming for. So how does this translate over to the lab? Here's four different examples. Four different lab techs were trying to create, trying to measure out five microliters. The very first one he got one right on, and the other ones are around it. They're fairly spread apart, so they're imprecise. They're not very precise, but it's somewhat accurate. That's, uh, that's arguable. This one, they're really close together, meaning that they're precise, but they're not close to the actual answer at all, so it's inaccurate. This one, they're all bunched together, so it's precise, and they're right on what we're looking for, so they're actually ac accurate as well. This one, it seems like they're shifted to the right. They're not very close together, so they're not precise. And there's only one that's actually on the answer, so they're not very accurate either. So how far off are we when we take our measurements? That can be calculated with the percent error, and it can apply to a single measurement. It expresses how much a measurement deviates from the true or accepted value. 
it takes the theoretical value, which is either the actual or the known or the true value, you'll see it several different, written several different ways, minus the experimental value, which is what you got, divided by what you were supposed to get, times 100. So for instance, an example is that you were timing your friend as she ran 100 meters. You, when you timed it, you timed it out to be 11 seconds. This is your experimental value. However, the officials got 10.67, which is the actual value. So 11.00 minus 10.67, take the absolute value of that, because it's always going to be positive. You'll always have a positive percentage. Divide by 10.67. And that's going to come out to be 3.093%. You'll notice that I accidentally flip-flopped the theoretical and the experimental on this one. It was supposed to be 10.67 minus 11.00. But because we're taking the absolute value of it, it's, ne it's negligible. You're going to have the exact same answer. As long as you have your experimental minus your theoretical somewhere up here, divided by the theoretical times 100. And that concludes our discussion on significant figures.